Good morning. This is Mr. Bailey from Columbia University. And this is Warren from NYU. All right, that's exciting. Today we're gonna to do roller coaster, right? So I have a few questions, baby. Number one, if you have a roller coaster and if you have the coaster at 270 degree with respect to x-axis, initial velocity is zero, right? Mm -hmm. You think the velocity? Wait, the initial velocity is zero. Thirty. Sorry. Initial velocity is 30. Would you think that the velocity at every point would be the same? No. Normal force would, uh, normal force in every point would be the same? No. Wait, every point would be the same? Well, yeah, because the mass doesn't change. Acceleration every point would be the same? No. Uh, potential energy every point would be the same? No. Kinetic energy every point would be the same? No. Total energy every point would be the same? Yes. Uh, centripetal force every point would be same? No. No, okay, great. So normal force all be same is because the main uh, purpose of the roller coaster is to give people sensation. And sensation comes from the normal force, who is Isaac often called a pair and weight. Okay, the other thing uh, is the path created by our pair on the Sunday roller coaster. No. Why not? Because the path created around uh, the sun by the Earth is elliptical, and it, the Earth only has one force acting on it. There's no normal force coming from uh, some gravitational track. There's a path created uh, by a bucket around a rope. If you hold the rope and rotate it, a roller coaster. Yes, because the tension in the rope plays the same role as the normal force for the roller coaster. Is the grandfather clock a roller coaster? Well, yes, because once again, the tension in the rope... So you're going to solve the problem. All right. To find the weight, which is equal to mz, which in this case is 100 kilograms multiplied by negative 10 meters per second squared, which gives us 1,000 newtons. And of course, your actual weight doesn't change throughout the entire loop. It's only your apparent weight that changes. So next, you can, of course, find the total energy. To do that, you can find the initial kinetic energy. The total energy will never change, so we can just write it four different times. So we can write the kinetic energy as half mv grid, which is 45,000. Okay. Now we can find the initial centripetal acceleration. Um, so, well, before that, we should find the potential energy at each of these points, then use conservation of energy to find um, kinetic energy at these points. Then we can move on to velocity and then acceleration. So, potential at this point is weight times height. Mm. A thousand newtons times well ten meters off the ground, which means that at both zero and one eighty, we have ten thousand joules of potential energy. And as you can predict, at ninety degrees, you're at your highest point, one full diam diameter above where you were before, which makes it double the height or twenty thousand. So then, that means that the kinetic energy will go down a little bit. Here 35, here 25, and then go back up once the potential energy recedes. So then, we know from the kinetic energy formula that we can solve for V. So what does that look like? Well, at 0 and 180 degrees, this would be 5,000 over 100. So that's equal to 26.46 meters per second. Or we'll just write 26.5.
then at the highest point, 90, you get the square root of 500, which is 22.36. Which I'll just write is 22.4. Then we find the centripetal acceleration, which should be pretty easy. All we have to do is write v squared over r, which um, for the initial point is just going to be 900 over 10, or 90 meters per second squared. Then for this point, it's going to be 700 over 10. This point is going to be 500 over 10. This point is going to be 700 over 10. Then for FC, we just need to multiply by the uh, mass, which gives us this. And now we just need to think about when FG is assisting or taking away from the centripetal force. So at 270 degrees, FG is pointing away from the center which means that Fn has to fight it. So Fn minus Fg has to be 9,000, which means that Fn has to be 10,000. Here, it's, uh, Fg is perpendicular to the centripetal direction, which means it basically has no effect on the centripetal force, meaning this has to be exactly 7,000. Here, Fg is actually helping contributing to the centripetal force, meaning this added to this has to be 5,000. And once again, we have the same situation. The hypothesis was velocity would not be the same at all four locations. Yes. Uh, was it true? Yeah, the velocity changed even though... 32, 27, 222, 227. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Normal force changes. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, practically everything changed. Oh, I see 10,000 to 7,000 to 4,000 to 7,000. So everything changed except the weight and the total energy. So everything changes, okay, you're right. So that's why roller coaster gives you loss of sensation. For every single point, you have different sensation. It's because what? Um, everything changes here, especially the normal force, which is your apparent weight. Yeah, you can sometimes go up to fueling 10 times your normal weight. That's right. And human, and, and it's deadly, it's deadly uh, to experience more than 10 G. I cannot even, I cannot even imagine more than 5 G. Uh, 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 I'll be, I'll be dead if I experience 5 G. But some people are strong. They're going to experience up to 9 G, but more, not, not more than that.